Oh, praise God. <clears throat> praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Praise God. It's, I sense His presence already. It's like the last night, never mind the first night. It's fantastic. I love it when God just comes. It's a real honor and a privilege again to be here. <clears throat> I think this is my seventh or eighth year of being here and it's a real blessing to me and Fiona or anything when we've been here and it's an honor to speak here tonight and bring God's word. You know, we can't make anything happen. The Holy Spirit He's not the spirit of a man. He's not the spirit of a denomination. He's the spirit of God. And he'll move anywhere where there's a hungry, seeking heart. I want to tell you, God has no favorites. God has no favorites. He, he, he is looking. He ha there is such a desire in the heart of God to fill us with his spirit. He has such a desire even more than we are willing sometimes to receive. Such a desire. And I believe God has just even ordained this night for us to encounter Christ. That's what the church was for. For the glory of God to come. For the presence of God to be here. And I know that many have come, traveled far. You've came tired, maybe with all different situations. Some have came in. You know, with great breakthroughs in their lives, others have came seeking that breakthrough. All different people here, but I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost knows how to take a word and apply it to every single person. Praise God. I just want to speak to you tonight. If you have a Bible, turn to, with me to Luke 19. Luke 19, I'm going to be reading from verses 1 to 10. It's a familiar story. It's the story of Zacchaeus. And when I was seeking the Lord for the night's message, I, he just led me to this and he spoke to me this afternoon while I was up there in the room. I want to just speak to you about the title of my message is God, God has ordained places for me and you to encounter him. God has ordained places in your future and in my future where we are going to encounter more revelation, more of Jesus Christ. It's not just a, a one-off touch from God and everything's okay. God has ordained us to have access and fellowship and to speak with them and walk with them. And there's people in the Bible who walked with God for years, but they, keep, they kept encountering God in places. Abraham had seven altars. There are places God has ordained for you and me to meet him. And I want to say to you, you, you can meet God in the most unlikeliest places. God can meet you anywhere. God knows where you are and he knows what you need tonight. But you know, sometimes I think, deep down in my heart, if you've been a Christian a long time, I think sometimes we are so conditioned. We have become so conditioned, we know exactly when to sing, we know exactly when to fall down, we know exactly when to stand up, we know exactly when to lift our hands. And through all of that, and praising God, sometimes all of that, and there's not an expectation in the heart that God wants to move. The heart, you can lift your hand and your heart be a million miles away. And I want to talk to you tonight, you may be a million miles away, but God is very near, hallelujah. That's what he's looking for. Praise God. <laughs> he's looking for for us to encounter with him. Luke 19 verses 1 to 10 and 9. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, 
for he was a short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up the sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be with the guest of a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half of my goods to the poor, and I have, if I have taken anything from among anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to your house, because he was also a son of Abraham. It's just one last scripture I want to read to you. You don't have to turn there. It's 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and through throughout the whole earth to show himself strong and be the half of those whose heart is loyal to him. I'll read that again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and through throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who are loyal to him. I wanted to say that God has ordained places for us to meet him. We see in Zacchaeus a man seeking God. We find a seeking man and a Christ who finds him. And Christ will always find and speak to a seeking man. But, you know, Zacchaeus had something. He had a problem. There was obstacles in his road. And any time you move towards Jesus Christ, any time you move for your heart to seek God, I'll tell you, as soon as this man went to seek God, all hell let loose. All of a sudden, everybody started to complain. All of a sudden, all the voices started to come out the woodwork. Isn't that amazing? When you're lukewarm and you're just not bothering anybody, everybody's fine. But as soon as you go on fire for God, everybody wants to put it out. As soon as you make a, a move towards Jesus Christ, all hell lets loose. And you've came here and there's obstacles in your road. And the Bible says that Satan is a hinderer. He, he tries to hinder, he tries to discourage. We're not fighting flesh and blood. The enemy doesn't have all power, but he does have power. And he, he tries to hinder people with a heart that is seeking God and bring discouragement in. And he whisper in your ear. Even in a meeting like this in the midst of it. You know, why bother Jesus? Why seek Jesus? He's not even hearing you. And that's an, that's an awful lie. But you know what? We become so sophisticated in our walk with God. We want to keep our dignity. We want to keep our dignity, but we want the fire of God. We want to keep our dignity, but we want the presence of God. But I want to tell you tonight, there's things in our heart that are obstacles to have an encounter with God. Sometimes there's pride. Sometimes there's spiritual pride. Sometimes there's things in there. Sometimes, if you've been a Christian long, we become so cynical. Everything we see, we have a judgment for. Everything we see, we have a comment on it. But you know, when we come to church, we say, well, that preacher was good, he was bad, the worship was okay, I give it a nine, I give it a ten, I give it a seven. Friends, the last time I came to church, it wasn't about us, it was about him. Yeah. And there's things in the heart, and God's saying, I want to move them. I want to move things for your heart at the very start of this conference. Do you know I feel a message in my heart tonight and I know, I know it's going to challenge you. But I, I, I can't do anything else but bring what God's put in my heart for you. And I just know tonight that God wants to move stuff. We are so full of stuff that God can't get moving in us. And God wants to disarm the enemy. He wants to remove stuff from your heart tonight. He wants to take that cynicism that's in there that's got in there. A judgmental spirit that's got in there. God wants us to encounter him. But there's things in the heart, there's obstacles in our way. You know, I looked at Zacchaeus and as I was reading this story, I got this thought about the sycamore tree. I got this thought, who planted it? Who planted that tree? That sycamore tree, if he climbed up it, it was probably about 100 years old. 
And I thought about that tree as I was coming tonight. And I thought, isn't that amazing? Somebody had a seed in their hand and was right there where that sycamore tree was and he was about to plant a sycamore tree. And I can see him walking about going, will I put it here? Will I put it there? Or will I put it there? And God saying, no, left a bit, right a bit, right in the middle. Plant it right there. Because in a hundred years from now, I'm going to meet a man there. And I'm going to save his soul. And I'm going to touch his life. I'm telling you, God has plans for our life. He's ordained places for me and you to encounter Christ. Hallelujah. What a saviour. That man never had a clue what he was planting. And there's churches planted all over the nation. And God said to people, buy that building, buy that place, do there. 20 years later in the fire conference and people can test. If we had a testimony in 89, you would say I came to the fire conference 10 years ago. I can take you to a spot. That's where God met me. That's where God met me. How did you meet God at the fire conference? Because men got together and prayed for 15 days and God said, go. There was a seeking heart. And God has ordained places where he wants us to meet him. There are places on the journey where God is ordained. And this fire conference is one of them. As I get into my message, I want to say this. Can you imagine the thief who was dying on the cross next to Jesus? What a place to meet Christ. Who would have thought that when Jesus Christ was being crucified... And the blood was flowing from his very body. And the principalities and powers were whispering in his ear, are you sure you're the son of God? And he's on that cross for me and you. And there's a man on that, the other side of, there's a thief on the other side of the cross. And he looks at the Lord Jesus Christ and he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. And he encountered Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, he's still there. And he never went to a church. He never done a discipleship course. He never even done an alpha course. He never got baptized. He never fasted. He never prayed. And sometimes we think, God's only going to meet me when I'm good enough. But I tell you, God wants to meet you when you're at your worst. Because he's always at his best. He's a God of grace and mercy and love. And he died for us while we were still sinners. But the devil gets us into this performing mode. Soon as I get right, then I will meet with God again. But God says, no, I'm not like that. He's always given us what we don't deserve. He's always poured his love on us when we least expected it. He's anointed us when we don't deserve it. He's guided us when sometimes we've been far away. Friends, God is good. God, we have a generous God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A place ordained, encountered Jesus, and it changed that man's eternal destiny forever. You know, friends, if we're seeking God and we want encounters with God, we need to seek his face. God is ordained for places for us. But I'll tell you, sometimes it won't happen reading a book or listening to a tape. In fact, friends, sometimes it doesn't even happen at a conference. It's like Jesus Christ was in the garden. Sometimes you just need to sweat it between you and Christ. Remember Moses in the wilderness? He blew it. He murdered a man. And he's thinking, well, it's, it's over. 40 years in the wilderness, just going about his business. And then after 40 years, after walking about in that wilderness for many years, all of a sudden he had an encounter with God in a burning bush. God, a God-ordained place. And maybe you've came here tonight and you're thinking, I blew it with God. I made a decision. I made a decision in my past that's robbing me of my future. 
I made a decision. And how can God ever meet me again? But I want to tell you, God is never late. He's always on time. And Moses was walking about that wilderness. And God met him again. He had an encounter with God again. I want to tell you, God's the God of the second chance. And the third chance. And the fourth. And the fifth. And the sixth. Friends, this is the heart of God. God is never late. Paul the Apostle, a man who was seeking God, but he was seeking God the wrong way. He was doing it through legalism. He was doing it through the law. He was doing it by self-effort. But nevertheless, God saw his heart. Who would have thought that he would have met God? You talk about having an encounter with God. He was on a horse going to kill Christians and God knocked him off his horse. It was a God encounter. And that encounter changed that man's life forever. It was so powerful that it changed his life forever. He became the great apostle Paul. And I want to tell you, we have so much talent in the church. We have so much gifted people in the church. But talent and gifting alone will not change your nation. We need a church where the presence of God is, where people encounter Christ. We need a church for the presence of God that, that the whole conference says it's about the glory of God. Pastor Mike said about the presence of God, we can feel it already. But there's churches rising up, friends, and there's lots of talent and there's lots of giftedness. And thank God for it with all of my heart. But I'll tell you, when the talent goes and the giftedness goes, the only thing that's going to change a human life is an encounter with Jesus Christ. But it's going to come to those with a seeking heart. God is not just coming to any old folk. Or people who are just lazy and unconcerned. He's coming to those with a heart. Those who say, God, I want you with all of my heart. People like Zacchaeus who's willing to break through and climb trees and do anything to see Jesus Christ. David Wilkinson, 50 years ago, started to seek God's face. He was sat in his room watching the telly when he turned a magazine and saw a young man who had committed murder. And he set his face to seek God. Friends, it was about 15 days later, or nine days later, that God spoke to him. And he went to New York. And for the last 50 years, hundreds of thousands of drug addicts have been saved and encountered Jesus Christ because one man with a seeking heart heard from God. And I'll tell you, when you have a seeking heart, you're going to hear God's voice. You're going to hear God speak to you. You see, Zacchaeus was seeking God, but it was God that found Zacchaeus. You see, Zacchaeus never said, Jesus, here I am. No, when Jesus walked by the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. See, we don't find God, God finds us. But if you have a seeking heart, you're going to hear the voice of God saying, Go, come down, go there, turn right, go up, go to Cornelius' house, go here, go there. You're going to get words of knowledge. We're going to move in the gifts of the Spirit. We don't need any man made gimmicks and phony fire. We need men who have encountered Christ and walked with God. Hallelujah. When people come in here meeting, and they, they come in and they're never the same again. Friends, I still believe in miracles. I still believe that God can heal. I still believe that God can deliver. I believe that God can break every chain that the enemy has ever made ruin a human soul. I believe that Jesus Christ can break it. If you have a seeking heart, and I know what it's like, you could be coming to this conference. And we've lifted our hands and we're praising God. But I know in my heart tonight, there are people here. And you've lost that hunger for God. And right at the very start of this conference, I'll tell you, I sense the grace of God say, no. If you can just, I can spark a flame again. I can put you on a, a flame again. I can put a passion in you again. But it's going to take a seek in his face. I'll tell you, we, we're always speaking about the new covenant. 
And I thank God for it. But I'll tell you, the new covenant, through what I read in the Bible, never made, never made men to sit back and wait. It made men seek God. It made men work even harder. It made men pray even more. It made men, they were in these cities and turned cities upside down. Witches were burning their books. People were getting set free. And they were encountering, not just a mean, but they were encountering the Christ through the power of God. Hallelujah. What a saviour. I know what it's like to be in ministry. And some of fellowship with our feelings rather than fellowship with God. I know what it's like. To feel dry and say, God, where are you? But he's looking for people who are going to live by faith and say, God, I don't care what I feel. It's not me. It's your word that's powerful. It's you that's powerful. I am weak, but you are strong. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Do you remember Jacob, the liar, the twister, running from Esau, his brother? At Peniel. He's on his own. God's been chasing the man for 20 years. You talk about character issues. 20 years. And you know, friends, some of us who have been saved a long time, we want people to be like us right away. But 20 years. Joe, Jacob, and maybe you've been here and you're saying this is the 20th year, but I still have things in my character that are robbing me of my destiny. I've still got things in here, and you're thinking, God, am I going to have to live with this? But 20 years later, Jacob had an encounter with God that was so powerful. God, he said he wrestled with God. And know what Jacob said? Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I want to tell you, I've said it before and I'll say it again, that fight was fixed. <laughs> God ordained that. And Jacob, that was the very night, 20 years later, 20 years, don't you lose heart about character defects and attitudes. Maybe this could be 20 years, maybe this could be your night. That Jacob became Israel. I'll tell you, never trust a man without a lump. <laughs> people who have not been broken. People who have not been touched by God. I won't let you go until you bless me. There is no shortcuts. There's nothing instant. God is looking for people who will seek him with all of their heart. With prayer and fasting. God is again looking for people who go into the secret place. Go into, there was a thing called a prayer closet at one time. Where people would go and they would seek God. And friends, I'm telling you. You know, I'm under new covenant. I believe God with all my heart. It's all of grace. But I'll tell you, there comes a time when a man needs to lock himself in a room with God and say, I'm not coming out until I have another encounter with you, God. I've read all the books. I've read the tapes. I've been to the conference. The rivers ran dry. And God said, I have moved all the props so you have nothing less but me. You've gone through hell at the moment. You're in a war at the moment. And you think, God, where are you? And he said, I'm bringing you deeper. I'm calling you deeper back to the place where you have nothing left. He doesn't want you relying on men. God's got a call and a purpose for every life. And I've seen it through the years. Well, if, if I just get close enough to this man, he can open the door for me. Well, friends, that's ludicrous. Because when a man opens a door for you, he can close it again. But if God opens a door for you, no man can shut it. You don't need any man to open doors for you. If God uses a man, God bless. That's wonderful. But God is jealous for your fellowship. God is jealous for you to go into a prayer closet and speak with him. And if you have a seeking heart, you're going to find him. You're going to find his presence. 
I went through something a few years ago. I'll tell you, I phoned every pastor, every friend, read every scripture, got every word. Until eventually I was left with just me and God. And that's where he's bringing the church to. To have nothing but him again. Hallelujah. Sometimes we look back at the past. Like Elijah sitting at the brook. Friends, God has dried some stuff up in your life. That season is over and we're trying to get it back and God's got something better in the future for you. I thank God for the good old days, whatever they are. Whatever they are. I know what it's like to try and grasp something. Oh, I'm, God, I remember I met you there, and I remember I met you there, and I remember I met you there. And you're trying to somehow relive a something that was in your spirit. Something that was in your spirit. Something, you know, when you first met him or somewhere where you had an encounter with God. And we're always looking to go back and God saying, that brook is dried up. I've got something better for you. I've got more for you than you could ever ask. I can do more abundantly than you ask or think. And God has ordained places for us to encounter him. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She encountered Christ. And just one touch from the king changed everything. Just one touch from the king. Everywhere these men went, these disciples, everywhere they went, people were encountering Christ. People who were, you know, possessed, by the demonic we're getting set free blind eyes were opening friends this generation I believe with all my heart I'm not looking for signs and wonders but I'll tell you there's a generation that needs to see the power of God again there's a generation that needs to encounter Christ when they come into our meetings we are so busy sometimes adjusting our meetings to not offend people we're so busy adjusting them, even to try and reach the lost, that the people of God are starving. They're starving of the presence of Christ. So busy altering stuff. I tell you, I'd rather be offended to get into heaven. I'd rather people come into my church anyway and I preached and they were offended and at least they heard the gospel, the real gospel, the truth and nothing but the truth. They deserve the truth, the people. They deserve the gospel and the full gospel with a full message. They, be, they deserve to come in and encounter Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Remember the man in the Bible, Jesus touched his eyes. I find that incredible. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why this is. I've never understood it. But I believe it with all my heart. I, I really don't. Maybe somebody can tell me after the meeting. Jesus touched him. And he said, what do you see? And he said, men like trees. Staggering. I'll tell you why it's staggering. He touched loads of people. And their eyes were open straight away. And he touched, what do you see? Men like trees. And then he says, and then he touched them again. I believe there's many at this conference sitting here and you're thinking, he touched me, I love him. But, but right now, tonight, I've no sin in my life. I love God with all my heart, but I need a touch again. I need to see some stuff clear again. I need to see Christ clear again. There's obstacles in my way. I've been in the battle too long in my, my thinking and my discernment and I'm, 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 I'm divided within myself. Oh, God, touch me again and show me. Guide me. Open up my eyes, God, again. Remember Elijah's servant came in and he said, we're surrounded. And, and he said, open his eyes, Lord. And he came back in and he said, it's, it's okay, there's more with us than there is with them. Oh, God, open our eyes again. Oh, God, touch me again. Friends, I don't know about you, but I need revived in my spirit again and again and again. I don't want another meeting or another sermon. I don't want another anything fancy. I just want God. I need revived in my spirit. Does anybody need revived in their spirit? I mean, a touch from the king. 
I'm not even looking for great communicators and great orators. I'm just looking for his presence and looking for his power. And look at, I'm going through hell and I need God. I just need to touch God. Well, I'll tell you, please, sometimes we need to lose our dignity to gain a destiny. We're so polished. Our faces are washed with dazzling and shiny shoes and everything's neat and everything's tidy. Everything's just neat and tidy. Enough. But if the spirit fell tonight, yeah. say, God, I don't care if I cry and my mascara runs. <laughs> I'll tell you, we laugh, but there are things that are obstacles. Who will think what? We're so conscious of everything in a bit. You get to the stage you're like Zacchaeus. You say, I don't care what I need to do, but I need to see Jesus. I'm going to get through every obstacle because I need to encounter him again. Maybe there's something in your body like that woman with the issue of blood and you say, I need a touch from God again. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit 30 years ago. Well, then maybe you need filled again because Christians leak. We know all the language, we've read all the books, we're broken at quote and stuff, and our intimacy with God is so far away. And if you're honest tonight, you can say, if you're honest tonight, say, God, wherever we are, we just need more of you. It was Duncan Campbell who said, wasn't it? Revival is not when our churches are filled with men, but when men are filled with God. Let me ask you something, I challenge you tonight, this first meeting, are you filled with God? Or there are some stuff need moved. Is a cynicism needs moved. Friends, I could have preached a whole different message, but I know that things need moved from people's lives. And I don't know how I know, but I know my knower knows. And God is saying, give me it. Make room for me again. Make room for me again. Just one touch from the king changes everything. See, Zach, you know when you've been touched from God. Zaki said this. Friends, I've been in a meeting, I'll tell you. I've seen everybody go down and within two minutes, everybody's up and nobody's changed. I mean, I've, I, I've been doing this for 28 years. You know when you've been touched. You know when somebody's been touched from God. Yeah. This is what Zacchaeus said. While everybody was giving it that yeah. about Zacchaeus, he shut all their mouths in about two minutes. He went, "I'll tell you what, Lord. If I've stole anything off anybody, I'll give them four times back." You know you've been touched when a guy's going to give you four times back what he took off you. Yeah. You know when somebody's been touched. It's not all talk. And it's not all emotionism. And it's not just caught up in a moment. It's somebody who said, he touched me and my life has changed. I was on drugs for 10 years and I walked into the back of a Pentecostal church and he touched me. And I've never been the same. But I can't stay there. I can't stay there 28 years without testimony. If I kept sharing my testimony, I'd be here all night. Because it's not about a drug addict. It's about a love for God. It's about a passion for His glory. It's about honor for His name. It's not about us. It's about Him. The reason He touched your life was so that you could forget about yourself and give Him glory and give Him honor and go about God's business and build God's kingdom. Oh, Paul says, oh, that I might know Him. And he had some encounters. In fact, friends, he got lifted up to the third heaven. That's quite an experience. But the experience wasn't what he was looking for. He was, all the time through that man's life, he said, it was him. It was a pursuit of the Christ. Do you remember when Peter fell? And God allowed Satan to shift him. 
And then God restored them. He encountered God again on a beach and had breakfast with him. Is it? Oh, he's lovely, isn't he? He's lovely. Psalm 16, 11 says that there's joy in the presence of God. No joy in circumstances. Not joy when everything's gone all right. Not joy, but joy in his presence. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. The Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What would your life look like if you laid some stuff aside and started to seek him? I mean, would that not encourage you? He's a rewarder of those who seek him. Would that not give you a passion to seek Jesus Christ? Would you ever wonder what those rewards are? Have you ever wondered what those are? He's a rewarder of those who seek him. I think, God, I want to know what that is. I want to go into a prayer closet. It says, when you go into the prayer closet in private, God will reward you in public. Seeking. There's a lot of promises in the Bible where God says, for those with seeking hearts, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. Friends, there is a call in the spirit. There is a call in the spirit to get some stuff out of our life. There is a call in the spirit tonight for people to seek him again. There's a call in the spirit for leaders, for leaders to turn off the internet and get into the book. There's a call for leaders, not just to print a sermon, but seek his face. You see, when you start to speak what everybody else is speaking about and you get it from books and you get it from here, I'm not saying don't look at those things, but I'll tell you, when you do that, you're nothing more than, than an echo. But when you go into a closet and seek God, you become a voice. Yeah. Everybody wants to fire, but who wants to go on the altar? 1 Kings 18, I'll tell you, put that bull on the altar. I'll tell you, if one bit of that bull had fell on the ground, the fire wouldn't have come. Every single bit needs to go on the altar. And oh, how I know. And oh, how I know every single bit. If you love the praise of men, the fire's not going to come. If you're going to preach to please men, the fire's not going to come. If you're going to preach to be popular, the fire's not going to come. And I'll tell you how I know that, because somebody told me. <laughs> and God, I'll tell you, God knows how to get a man. I know you're sitting there saying, this is no Jay's usual message. I know, but it is God's. And I've came to challenge you tonight, the first night. Do you want to encounter him again? He has ordained this night for many people to meet with him again and give you a hunger for the prayer closet and give you a hunger for the word. I know what it's like when you can't, I can't even pick up my Bible and I couldn't pray. I've been through it all, but I want to tell you, if you will just move, take a move towards Christ, all of a sudden, that's when the Holy Ghost comes. That's when the Holy Ghost comes and encourages us. That's when the Holy Ghost comes and helps us. Friends, we are not on our own. I'm not talking about an effort. Well, I need to pray more, I need to do this more. That just puts us on to bondage. No, it's out of love saying, God, if you don't touch me, I can't live here anymore. People are tired tonight. People, you might even come here and you're burnt out tonight. You're smelling on the outside, but on the inside you're saying, God, I've really not been seeking you for a long time. And you're going to need to be honest about that because this conference, the very start of this conference, the Holy Spirit is, is wanting people to encounter Christ and his presence and his power 
and his love and his joy and his peace. And Zacchaeus, I don't know who planted the tree, but I know this, this conference was planted by God. And I know tonight that he wants you to encounter him. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? Is anybody tired of religion? Is anybody tired of sermons? From sermon to sermon, from tape to tape, from conference to conference, and you think, God, I've had enough. God, I just want you. And Zacchaeus met with God. The thief on the cross met with God. Moses met with God. The woman with the issue of blood met with God. Jacob met with God. And so can you. And so can I. It's time to seek the Lord. It's time to put down. You know, friends, I'll tell you, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. Do not go to church Sunday morning or anybody else's church and sit there and start the comparing game. We are meant to come to church to meet with God and Him alone. It doesn't even matter if the preacher's bad. It doesn't matter who's anointed and who isn't it. If you come with a seeking heart, I'll tell you, you will find God. When I first got saved, I took my friend to church with me. He came to my door with some drugs. And I said, I don't take drugs, but if you, if you want to stay tonight, I'll take you to church with me. And we went to church. And I thought it would be the same guy who was speaking the week before. And it wasn't, it was a wee quiet guy. He was like mourning everybody. I just like to, to be honest with you, I was sitting there and I was cringing. I was thinking, where's that other guy? Where's the other guy? Where's the other guy? Where is the other guy? I mean, I was dying. My friend Paul was sitting, I couldn't even look at him. I couldn't even look, I couldn't have looked to the left. I was thinking, oh, this has all went wrong. And we walked out, I turned around, he was sobbing. He was sobbing. He said, I know what you mean. I said, I told you, didn't I? <laughs> I, said, I told you. And do you know why? Because God took that little quiet man and the Holy Ghost spoke right into his life. And I'll tell you, we miss the voice of God because we're so busy looking at the messenger. We're so losing, looking for the dynamic and this and this. But can you hear voice gods tonight through this foolish bit of clay standing in front of you? The Holy Spirit can come tonight and say, can I examine your heart? You see, we think we're on fire until you meet somebody who's on fire. We're very good at ourselves. We're very pat each other's back. No, you're on fire. No, you're on fire. <laughs> that guy's on fire. And I'll tell you, sometimes you think you're on fire until you meet somebody who's on fire. Until you meet a man of God. Until you meet a man of... Dis I'll tell you, there's hardly any discernment in the body of Christ. Because of the lack of seeking. I'll tell you, you can go out, you can go to a nightclub, you can sleep with somebody, you can come into church on a Sunday, and I'll tell you, you can, you can pray out and somebody will say amen because there's no discernment and God says no, those days are over. I'll tell you, God is coming, friends. God is coming. And he's telling, he's telling these church, get your heart right with me. Get ready. Because storms are coming. Storms are coming. And people are dancing, they don't even see it. They're so busy talking about their own ministry, talking about me and what's my call and what's my thing. And God said, it's time to put, lay everything down and seek my face. It's even time to lay down our ministries and our preachings and everything. Say, God, I'm putting everything on the altar. I just want to seek you. It's time to put your reputation on the altar if you think you had one. So who tonight? Say, God, I just need you again. I want your presence more than anything. You know what Moses said? Who wants silver and gold if you're not there? And there's enough people preaching about the silver and gold, and I'll tell you, you can keep it because I want him. 
Nothing in this world is going to make you happy. No materialism, no ministry, no church, no big crowds. I don't care how big your church is or how big anything is. I tell you, eventually, God will say, no, no, this is not what it's about. This is about me. This is about me. So who tonight is going to say, God, I'm, I'm willing to put, put myself on the altar again. But I'm willing to lay stuff down. I'm willing to lay it all down. Wherever you tell me to go, I'm going to go. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do. God, I mean, even if you've not got a seeking heart, just cry, God, will you give me a seeking heart? God, will you give me a heart again that seeks your face? Friends, I know I'm no shouting, but I'll tell you the Holy Ghost is whispering in people's ear. I'll tell you, I'm sick of the talk. Most of it's all talk. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 talk. And it says, those who wait. Who wants to wait? You know, go into a room and wait for God and sit there and saturate yourself in his presence and maybe he'll speak to you. And if he does, maybe we'll have something to say. But who wants to wait? Nobody. We want everything instant, we want it now, we want it then. And God says, go into a room and wait. And I'll tell you, if you wait long enough, God turns up. What would our, our lives look like if we waited just a little bit longer? Flesh is so full of activity. It's just, go into a room for 10 minutes. I've, I've tried that. I've said to somebody, I've said to my wife, Fiona, Fiona, I'm just going up the room. I'm going to pray for two hours. I went in and I've prayed about, oh, I've just prayed, 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 prayed. Look at the watch. Five minutes have went by, and I've, I've had to sit there for the rest of the time because I'm too embarrassed to go back down the stairs. <laughs> Friends, I've been there, and I've done it, and I've done the talk because I wasn't willing to wait. But now, I can tell you, I want to be more in the room than I do anywhere else. And the older I get, I don't want to move until he spoke to me, until he says something. I want to be saturated in God. In Jesus' name, amen.